When Jen Taylor developed a lump on her top jaw, she initially thought it was an abscess, but she was diagnosed with bone cancer and underwent a 16-hour operation to remove half her face. Doctors then used her shoulder blade and muscle from her back to rebuild it. Well, these are pictures of the uh, start to finish of the process. She photographed what has been an incredible recovery as her appearance was restored. Dealing with the emotional as well as the physical side effects, of course, will not have been easy. Now Jen is cancer-free, she's back to work, and she's speaking about her story because she wants to inspire others. Jen, it is amazing, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. I mean, you look fantastic. Yeah. And this operation was <laughs> six months ago. Tell yeah. us what, I mean, we've seen the pictures. You obviously, you had half of your face removed. Can you sort of indicate to us the bit that was removed of and course. what you had to go through? Yeah, I mean, I look back at those photos now and think, how was I even a person? Like, you can't even believe that kind of thing. I just want to give that girl a hug and oh. tell her it'll be okay. But, I mean, yeah, proof that it, it does get better. Yeah. But they took out the top of my jaw, so I have no... I've lost most of my top row of teeth mm. and my jaw up to behind my cheekbone, up to my eye socket, and then the back of my nose. Um, that was all cut out, and then my shoulder blade was cut out and then reconstructed from there. And the roof of my mouth is now actually made from the skin and muscle from my shoulder. I mean, the physical <laughs> recovery has been amazing because to look at you, as I say, you just, I mean, you, you would not believe that that yeah. all happened only six months ago. Take us back though a bit further to when you were diagnosed because you were sort of plunged headlong into something that obviously was, must have been a huge shock and completely life-changing for you. Yeah, well, people say that they never think that they'll have cancer, but the thing is that you just never even think to think about getting cancer. So you go into, I never think the worst of things until they happen. So I, you go into that first appointment thinking, ah, it'll be fine, it'll be you know, benign, it won't be anything wrong, sitting there in the beautiful room at um, the Cause hospital. Because it was an abscess in your tooth. Well, or it seemed to be. Apparently, yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't, it, super rare cancer. Right. You, you just assume, oh, dental, have a look. Um, but as soon as the specialist saw me, he was like, no, that's not, we need to get you in. So same day um, as he saw me, they got me straight in, biopsy. A week later, cancer. A week later, saw my oncologist and a week later, chemo. So it all happened very quickly. So the, the chemo will have taken it out of you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My chemo was quite hectic, so it wasn't the usual, well, I don't know, but there is no usual when it comes to cancer or treatment, but it was Monday to Friday, 24 hours a day, connected up to this stuff, okay. um, which the amazing thing about uh, the way that UCLH does that for these patients with this really extensive chemo, so you get these backpacks and they fill up um, backpacks and bags with all of your chemo and water, send you off into the NHS hotel next door and you have the ability to sort of, as much as you can, live and feel like you're not lying in a hospital ward, which just kept me going, really, having that. <laughs> but you went from that then into this surgery and going yeah. into it, what were you told would happen and what were you told to expect? I mean, you're told the details. So before you go into surgery, you have to sign off that they've kind of explained what they're going to do. So, you know, you know that they're going to cut out the cancer, they'll cut out some of your jaw, they'll cut out your shoulder, but you never know they don't know what they're going to do until you get in there. So they did, did they not really know the extent of how much they'd have to cut away? Yeah, until they actually mm. get in there, cut it out, they sort of thought they might have to cut my face. I was very lucky when I woke up to find that they hadn't, yes. so my yes. surgeons are just amazing. But a lot of things are like, this might happen, this might not happen, we can't really tell, prepare you for everything. So you really, you wake up and your whole face is being taken oh, out that's and you're extraordinary. In pain, So they didn't but... cut your your face but they Amazing. removed the bone underneath they went all through the roof of my mouth wow which is just incredible with no outward scars at all they thought at one point they might have to cut off half of my nostril but very lucky that they managed to not do that and they took the bone the muscle the blood supply from your yep. shoulder to reconstruct it so everything happened in one operation yeah um, unfortunately for me my first operation actually part of it failed so I got rushed back into surgery five days later 
and have another 10 hour surgery to take the vein out of my leg and then reconnect that up through my neck um, because the flap, which is what they call it, had started dying. It rushed me back in. So I had a 16 hour surgery, then a 10 hour surgery. You took the pictures <laughs> of yourself to why? Was that for others? Was that for you? What, um, what was? I was very much, so from when I was first diagnosed, I was very much about being very open with everything. So I started a blog, I've had Instagram photos, so I've been very much, I want people to understand the reality of what this is. Mm -hmm. You see me now and you don't know what I've been through. Mm -hmm. So I wanted people to understand that. Um, and I thought it was important to have that. But as time went on and I was taking them, it became such an important part of my recovery. Because day to day, you don't think anything's got better. You're still sitting there, you're still swollen, you still have all these problems. And I could be thinking, oh, this is never going to be better. And I'd take a photo and look back to four days before and be like, oh my gosh, I have I've come so far. So having that comparison and on the hard days being able to look back and see that just made such a difference. I just think anyone who has any kind of really you know, invasive surgery should do that, just, just see their progress, keep themselves going. You sound like you got through it with incredible resilience. Um, uh, I, I mean, it wasn't easy. You almost make it sound quite straightforward in terms of, of how you got through it, but obviously it, it wouldn't have been. I mean, were you given any support for what you were going through psychologically? What were there, Did you have psychological issues with it? Um, there's always support there. Um, for me, I think it was very very good I, as I say I had my blog and I um, had a whole community on Twitter that I connected with and having them was just incredible um, another great thing that you don't you don't realize these things exist until you get cancer which is great no <laughs> that's probably a good thing but um, where I got treated at UCLH um, is at the Macmillan Cancer Center and there's um, like they call it the living room this part of the building where you can go in and you can have cups of tea. There's always people there to chat. Um, they've got lots of services. Like if, yeah, if you're struggling with anything, you can see a psychologist. Um, they've got wig services and all that. And just having that support when I was in waiting for an appointment and being stressed about an MRI or something and knowing that there were just always people there to chat to. Um, so that, the support from them was really, really good during this time. And, and now you're completely cancer free? You can't say cancer right. free, but yeah, currently no evidence of, of disease, I think is what they call it. Um, so the MRIs have nothing ominous in them. So fingers crossed. <laughs> Absolutely. How has it changed you? Uh, I sort of thought when I, when I got diagnosed, because my cancer is treatable, when I got diagnosed, I thought, all right, I'm <laughs> not, okay, fine, I'll, I'll have this, it'll be hard work, and then I'll close that chapter and I'll move on. But yeah, it became quite apparent that that's not possible. It really does become such a big part of your life. And like the people who I've met, the people who I've connected with, I just, I, it's just amazing. Like, can't say that cancer is amazing, but the opportunities and the, that have come out of it and the people I've met, it's, you know, it's just been incredible. I kind of almost feel like my life is richer for it, for these people and these mm -hmm. things. Yeah, but you definitely rethink, <laughs> rethink your priorities and the like when you sort of face this. But it's definitely a part of my life now. It's really great to talk to you, Jen. Thank you very much for Thank coming you. in. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Now, Jen Taylor was diagnosed with bone cancer after developing a lump on her top jaw. She had to undergo a 16-hour operation to remove half her face. Her face was then rebuilt using bone from the shoulder blade. As you can see from these pictures, Jen decided to photograph her incredible recovery as her appearance was restored. She's been sharing her story with us. My chemo was quite hectic, so it wasn't the usual, well, I don't know, but there is no usual when it comes to cancer or treatment, but it was Monday to Friday, 24 hours a day, connected up to this stuff, okay. um, which the amazing thing about uh, the way that UCLH does that for these patients with this really extensive chemo, you get these backpacks and they fill up um, backpacks and bags with all of your chemo and water, send you off into the NHS hotel next door and you have the ability to sort of as much as you can live and feel like you're not lying in a hospital ward, which just kept me going, really, having that. <laughs> but you went from that then into this surgery and going yeah. into it, what were you told 
would happen and what were you told to expect? I mean, you're told the details. So before you go into surgery, you have to sign off that they kind of explained what they're going to do. So, you know, you know that they're going to cut out the cancer, they'll cut out some of your jaw, they'll cut out your shoulder, but you never know. They don't know what they're going to do until you get in there. So they did, did they not really know the extent of how much they'd have to cut away? Yeah, until they actually mm. get in there, cut it out, they sort of thought they might have to cut my face. I was very lucky when I woke up to find that they hadn't, yes. so my yes. surgeons are just amazing. But a lot of things are like, this might happen, this might not happen, we can't really tell, prepare you for everything. So you really, you wake up and your whole face is being taken oh, out that's and you're extraordinary. In pain, So they didn't but... cut your your face, but they Amazing. removed the bone underneath. It went all through the roof of my mouth. Wow. Which is just incredible, with no outward scars at all. They thought at one point they might have to cut off half of my nostril, but very lucky that they managed to not do that. And they took the bone, the muscle, the blood supply from your yep. shoulder to reconstruct it. So everything happened in one operation. Yeah, um, unfortunately for me, my first operation actually part of it failed so I got rushed back into surgery five days later and had another 10 hour surgery to take the vein out of my leg and then reconnect that up through my neck um, because the flap which is what they call it had started dying it rushed me back in so I had a 16 hour surgery then a 10 hour surgery you took the <laughs> pictures of yourself to why was that for others was that for you what, um, what was I was very much, so from when I was first diagnosed, I was very much about being very open with everything. So I started a blog, I've had Instagram photos, so I've been very much, I want people to understand the reality of what this is. Mm -hmm. You see me now and you don't know what I've been through. Mm -hmm. So I wanted people to understand that. Um, and I thought it was important to have that. But as time went on and I was taking them, it became such an important part of my recovery. Because day to day, you don't think anything's got better. You're still sitting there, you're still swollen, you still have all these problems. And I could be thinking, oh, this is never going to be better. And I'd take a photo and look back to four days before and be like, oh my gosh, I have I've come so far. That was Jen talking to me a little bit earlier. Well, Harry on email said this young woman is amazing. After everything she has endured, she has emerged as an incredibly positive, bubbly young woman who also happens to be attractive. It would be remiss of me not to pay tribute to every member of the medical and surgical teams who have achieved such a fantastic outcome for her. Uh, Les on email, what a great story, bless her, and I wish her a great future. Helen on Facebook, what a courageous, positive lady you are, Jen Taylor, an inspiration to many. Good luck and stay healthy. And Dawn on Facebook says, what a fantastic lady Jen is. A positive attitude does help to heal. Such an, insp such an inspiration to fellow cancer sufferers. 